I'm delighted at the work I've done. I've spent hours working, daring to change the high altar. You see, when we started it, we wanted it, we were more orthodox, and we wanted the Virgin Mary by my nephew David, but he wanted to do have no clothes on. And we thought that Molly, who was, you know, we did have staff in those days, would refuse to dust the place if they had a nude Mary. So I suggested she'd be entirely robed in water. So this he allowed, the Aquarian Madonna. I wanted her Aquarian, and on her head was the sun and the moon, wearing as a watering pot. Still with the Marian idea of Aquarius. Then she gradually became Isis. But I did notice that uh, there was no poor old god anywhere near, and no other goddesses or her other aspects as being divine mother. We seem to have this uh, negative attitude in some aspects of our uh, uh, Piscean age against people having babies or having family life. We were all sort of holy monks and nuns and virgins. Though I happen to be like that myself because I was a rather electric type person, you know, turned on with electricity, spiritual thing, I do know that the other is equally holy and wonderful. And so just, I don't know why, but at the time of the winter solstice, I thought, well, poor old God, he's nowhere around. And then I looked at this Egyptian bath towel, I think it was, horrified David, I turned up with bath I adored these Egyptian hangings I got from our priestess, um, Helen, who sells this stuff from Egypt. And uh, what I liked especially was an attempt of the new kingdom to reconcile themselves with Isis. So you have an Isis got up as Cleopatra of the new Mut, the vulture goddess, who's meant to peck her blood to, to give it to her baby. And she's holding a nice new baby. It could be either sex, but obviously it's meant to be Horus. In this conciliating effort, because on one side, on the left, as you look at it, you see the Amon Ralos, who were called Set and things. A perfect reconciliation against duality. You have the god Amon Ra with the great feathers of truth and justice on his head, and he's got on the other side, um, hang on, I must have a look, uh, Mut, the, 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 the uh, well, yes, so this is the Amon Ra lot, the new kingdom, you know, but, uh, not the Delta, but higher up. The, the upper Egypt, but on the other side they very tactfully have our lot, the Isis lot, Tehuti, friend of Isis, and he's got the horns of Amon Ra on his head, uh, but also he is the god of wisdom, Tehuti, Thoth, and that is the deepest of all the western mysteries, and on the right you have a very mysterious goddess, Nephthys. She is connected with the moon, with spiritual teachings, and everything deep and occult. And so I looked at this, was, and I thought, well, wouldn't it be marvellous if it would fit? But it was so long, it fitted the whole length of the altar. And I put it there, and I knew that's where it belonged. Because when I make an invitation, holy goddess, mother of all beings, well, she has a washing pot on her head, but no other sign of any infant anywhere near. So now you have her still, the divine Sophia the Holy One of Divine Wisdom, the Holy Spirit, Goddess, but you also have her as a woman holding a baby, obviously with some dads around, uh, two gods and two goddesses I have a side. So there we go. I, I hope you, I, I feel now I can make invocation more definitely because on the left you have the Goddess of Truth and Justice, Mark, with great outspread wings and above the Aknarton sign, the Aten, which is not the sun, it's the inner light, divine light within all that is, pouring out so nice little hands at the end. So you can put any religion on the end. And on the other you have three muses, a uh, um, 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 person playing the harp, a flute and a stringed instrument. So I had, then I thought, well we have an energetic God also. We have on the right, uh, on the right of the altar, as you look at it, we have something given by my friend, um, Noel. He made this for me, an actual pyramid. And in it you can keep things. It's an ark. And below that you have a pharaoh, wearing oddly enough the, uh, the, um, 
I believe you're crowd of, of Osiris. They have to go out on a horse. At least he's happy on a horse. He looks like Osiris. On the left, you have the priestess's chair, the Lucian carved with the rather naked looking cher cherub ladies and the horned god in green. This is Venetian, I think. About 14th century. I like it. And behind you have Nefertiti, a marvelous head carved by my nephews. It's so thin, it's almost paper made of wood on the goddess. So on the left, you have the goddess window looking right out onto Brigid and on the right you have the god window with this pyramid and an image of the god and you have I had the courage incredible courage to people's horror painting on glass well people have so there's an image of Osiris and he's holding his son the younger Horus and on the left the goddessy bit you have Isis holding the younger Hathor in her arms so it's continuing, it's like a fractal. You come from the Gracia, and that's the way the Egyptians saw things. The reconciliation of duality, or whether man or woman, left or right, up or down, black or white, as above, so below, but so poor old below, is above. Um, anyhow, I've gone on and on. Does that explain things to you?